This lesson deals with the solution to exam two. You can find this exam solution near the end of the ECE 202 ebook. This exam had four problems with weights varying from 24 to 27 points. This is an actual exam that I gave when I taught the course recently, and based on the average test score and the standard deviation, I came up with the following curve. From 86 to 100 was an A, 74 to 85 a B, 61 to 73 a C, 47 to 60 a D, and less than or equal to 46 points was not passing. In problem number one, we're asked to use step functions to write an expression for the following two waveforms. First one is a pulse from zero to 20 milliamps at five milliseconds to six milliseconds. Now if we use a step function, we go from zero to a value, in this case zero to 20 milliamps, and we could do that with a delayed step of five milliseconds, the so u of t minus five milliseconds, but that's just gonna give us a step function. I need to neutralize this other part, so I'll just create another step function in the opposite direction. So minus 20 milliamps, but then start that at six milliseconds. And when I add that to the previous result, zero plus zero is zero. And then I have here, I have a plus 20 and a minus 20, and it gives me zero. So I get back to this expression. So we have 20 milli times u of t minus five milliseconds, and then a minus 20 milli times u of t minus six milliseconds. And the units on this answer are amps. This is worth 12 points, and I give six for each of the two pieces. And I took one point off if the units weren't included. The second waveform, it's called a sawtooth. Have a slope from zero to 12 volts in seven seconds, and then goes back to zero. We get a ramp, could use t times u of t, so starting at t equals zero, and then the slope would be the rise over the run. I have 12 in seven seconds, so it'd be 12 over seven. I have to get the result to go back to zero, and I could do that with a similar ramp, but with the opposite slope. But if I were to put that here, and add these two, I get zero. So if I just simply delay this mirror image till seven seconds, then I'll just have zero plus this, and then we're gonna add where this is at seven seconds, which is equal to 12 volts, and then beyond, and the two cancel. And I get the results up here. Got a ramp, and then back to zero. 12 divided by seven is 1.71 times t times u of t, and then minus 1.71t times u of t minus seven. This is worth 12 points, six for each part, and then minus one if you didn't include the units. In problem number two, we're asked to find f of t from f of s by doing a partial fraction expansion. For complex poles, we'll use the cosine format. Given this f of s, let's find the roots of the denominator using the quadratic formula, minus four plus or minus four squared, minus four times 40 times one, and that's a minus 160. Pull out the minus sign as a j, and I'm left with 160 minus 16, which is 144, and the square root of that is 12. Then minus four plus or minus j 12 divided by two, and that's equal to minus two plus or minus j6. Could write f of s as s plus four divided by these two roots, s plus two minus j6, and then times s plus two plus j6. I can write a partial fraction expansion as k1 over s plus two minus j6 plus k1 conjugate divided by s plus two plus j6. To do the cosine format, all we need to do is find k1. k1 is gonna be equal to our transfer function multiplied by s plus two minus j6 and evaluated when s is equal to minus two plus j6. Plugging that in for s, I have minus two plus j6 plus four. That's gonna be equal to four minus two, which is two plus j6. For the denominator, this term cancels with this. Then plugging in for s, minus two plus j6, then I have a plus two plus j6. The plus two and the minus two cancel, and I get j12. One over j is minus j, and then two divided by 12. Here the j's cancel, and I get six divided by 12. So the real part is a half, the imaginary part is 1 sixth, which is 0.166. And then I have a minus j multiplying that. Put that into polar form. Plugging these two into my calculator, I get out a magnitude of 0.527, bigger than either of these two. I'm gonna be in the fourth quadrant with an angle close to zero degrees, because this is much shorter than this. So I get a minus 18.43, and again, that seems reasonable. Will be twice the value of K1, which is two times 0.527, and that's equal to 1.054. And then E is raised to the real part, which is a minus two times t, and then the cosine is the imaginary part, which is six times t, and then the angle of minus 18.43. In ECE 201, we use the format of a time constant. We'll take the reciprocal of two and write this as one over a half, and that would be 0.5 or 500 milliseconds. Let's also pull out a two pi from the six, as I have two pi times 0.955 or 955 millihertz. 1.054 times e to the minus t over 500 milliseconds, times the cosine of two pi, 955 millihertz, times t, and the angle of minus 18.43, and then times u of t, because this is valid for t greater than zero. 
This is worth 25 points, and I gave 5 points for the magnitude, gave 5 points for the time constant, 5 points for the frequency, 5 points for the angle, and then 5 points for having U of T. Problem number 3 is an RL switching circuit. We're asked to transform into the S domain, use the Laplace transforms and the partial fraction expansion to find I of T. Let's label all our steps. In our notes, we had a five-step algorithm. Step one is to find the initial conditions. So for t less than zero, we have the switch open. The inductor looks like a short circuit in steady state. So we have nine volts across 5K. That's 1.8 milliamps. So step two, transforming into the S domain, the switch is gonna be closed at t equals zero, and we basically are applying a step voltage with a series resistance of 2K. We'll model that nine volts as nine over S with a 2K. I of T becomes I of S, and our inductance becomes 30 milli times S, and then our initial condition is flowing in this direction, and so I'll use a current source as a step function of 1.8 milliamps divided by S. Step three, we do the S domain analysis, and since I have two sources, I could do superposition. Setting this current source equal to zero as an open circuit, then the current I of S, due to the first source, I'll call it I prime of S, is gonna be the voltage divided by the total impedance of 2K plus 30 milli times S. And that's this expression right over here. Multiply numerator and denominator by S. I pull out a 30 milli out of this term, and I'm left with just S, and then 2K divided by 30 milli is 66.7K, and then 30 milli divided into nine is 300. Next, we can then set the voltage source equal to zero and find the current using a current divider. If I wanna find the current in this element, I'll take this impedance over the sum of the two times the current, and it's on the following page. And we'll call that current I double prime of S. Let me clean this up a little bit. So I've got 1.8 milli times 30 milli. The S's cancel. I'm left with a denominator of 30 milli times S plus 2K. Pull out the 30 milli, I have S. 2K divided by 30 milli is again 66.7K. And the two 30 millis cancel, I have 1.8 milli. I'm gonna add the two results to get my I of S. My first result plus my second result. So I have a common denominator of S plus 66.7K. I multiply this by S over S, and I can add the numerators. My denominator then is S times the quantity S plus 66.7K, 1.8 milli times S plus 300. I'll pull out the 1.8 milli, I'm left with S, and then 300 divided by 1.8 milli is 166.7K. This form or this form is actually that of a proper rational function, and I need that to be able to do my partial fraction expansion. Step number four then is to do the partial fraction expansion. So I can write my I of S then as some K1 over S plus some K2 over S plus 66.7K. To find K1, I'll multiply my transfer function times S and then let S equal zero. These terms cancel. Then I have 1.8 milli times zero plus 166.7K divided by zero plus 66.7K. And that turns out to be 4.5 milli. K2 is to take our transfer function multiplied by S plus 66.7K and then evaluate when S is equal to minus 66.7K. This will cancel with this. So 1.8 milli minus 66.7K plus 166.7K is 100K. And then the denominator just a minus 66.7K. That gives me a value of minus 2.7 milli. Now I can express I of S in my step five as 4.5 milli over S minus 2.7 milli over S plus 66.7K. Taking the inverse Laplace transform, then I get 4.5 milli times U of T, then a minus 2.7 milli, E to the minus 66.7k times t times u of t. Let's see, I put this in the form of a time constant, so I'll take the reciprocal of this, and it turns out to be 15 microseconds. So my final answer then is 4.5 milli minus 2.7 milli e to the minus t over tau, which is 15 microseconds, all times u of t and units of amps. I've indicated the partial credit in the steps that were given leading up to this answer, and again, I'll take off one point if the units aren't present. In question 4a, we're asked to use the definition of Laplace transform to show that the Laplace transform of e to the minus alpha t times u of t is equal to one over s plus alpha. If you recall, the definition of Laplace transform is the integral from zero minus to infinity of our function times e to the minus st dt. u of t just equal to one, or t greater than or equal to zero. So I've got the product of two exponentials, and I'll just combine those by adding up their powers. That's gonna be a minus the quantity s plus alpha times t. Now if you recall, the integral of e to the ax is one over a e to the ax, and so I've got that as my integral, a minus one over s plus alpha times e to the minus the quantity s plus alpha times t. Evaluate at the upper limit minus the lower limit. e to the minus infinity is equal to zero. e to the zero is equal to one. The two minus signs cancel, and I get one over s plus alpha, and that's what I was trying to show. 
In 4b, we're given f of s and asked to find f of t. But f of s is not a proper rational function, so we need to convert that into one. So let's divide the denominator into the numerator. s plus 2 divided into 2s plus 5. 2 times s cancels that term, and then 2 times 2 is 4. 5 minus 4 is 1. So you could write this expression as 2 plus the remainder 1 over s plus 2. I'll take the inverse Laplace transform. The inverse Laplace transform of 2 is the impulse function, so 2 times delta of t, and then the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 2 is e to the minus 2t. Let's write this in terms of a time constant as 1 over a half, and that would be 500 milliseconds. Given the following p-spice command, that tran, 5 micro, 2 milli, 0, 5 micro. How many data points will be plotted? If we take the final value divided by the print step, that'd be 2 milli divided by 5 micro, and that'd be 400 points. That'd be the least number of points you would get in a simulation. And then lastly, given this MATLAB output, what is f of t? Well, Dirac is our impulse function. This is e to the minus 3t, and this is 3 times t squared. Each problem here was worth 6 points. There's little or no partial credit. And this is the solution to exam number two.